Hello, everybody, and welcome on behalf of the International Brotherhood of Magicians. My name is Alexander, I'm your international president, and it is my pleasure to share with you today a special event. That, of course, is the live stream broadcast of the On the Road special featuring master magician Lance Burton. So, without further ado, please put your hands together for my friend and yours, Lance Burton. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Happy Sunday. Thank you for joining us for this very special uh, Magic uh, Sunday. And I want to really thank the International Brotherhood of Magicians for sponsoring this. Um, if you're not a member of the IBM and you love magic, you really ought to be a member. I joined uh, 46 years ago when I was a kid, and it was a big part of my magic education and here's the here's the, the the website right here on the screen you can go there and get all the information and one of the great things about being a member of the ibm is every month you get the linking ring magazine delivered to your house i like the old-fashioned paper magazine uh, that i that i read every month now uh, you can save a couple of bucks a year by going uh, all digital they'll they'll send you the magazine uh, uh, on you can read it on your your laptop or your device, but you know I'm old-fashioned. I like the real magazines. We also the IBM also has an annual convention, usually held in July every summer. Now, unfortunately, because we all have been quarantined, the convention this year uh, has been postponed. But uh, I'm very happy to say the Lance Burton Teen seminar, which is part of the IBM convention, is going to go forward online this year. We already have, I think, over 40 young magicians signed up. It's absolutely free of charge to any teen who's a member of the IBM or has a family member who's a member of the IBM. So you can, again, go to the same website, magician.org, and you can find information. It's free of charge, but we do want you to uh, register ahead of time, and, and uh, there's a little form there to fill out, and, and our registrar, uh, uh, Simone, will contact you and give you all the, the info on that. Uh, it's open to any young magician between the age of uh, 13 and 19, I believe, and um, again, it'll all be online, like on a Zoom platform, and it'll be me, Jeff McBride, and Larry Haas running the program. And we'll have uh, guest uh, uh, lecturers. Michael Trix is in the house. Hey, Michael, good to see you. Uh, so glad you guys are all showing up today. So anyway, uh, and if you know a young magician, please pass that along to them. I want to keep this thing rolling. Now, uh, a few weeks ago, we did the same thing with my movie, Billy Toppet. And this time, we're doing it. Uh, people seem to enjoy it, and they ask for more. So this time, we're going to pull out of the vault one of my television specials. Uh, back in the 1990s, there was a lot of magic on TV. World's Greatest Magic aired on NBC, and I was on several of those. And my specials aired on NBC and, and, and a bunch of other magic shows. And then they had a whole second life on cable, and then they were sent around the world. So uh, the show you're going to see uh, today is called On the Road. This is from 1999. Over 20 years ago, we shot this. And we really hope you enjoy it. Now, we're also going to have contests and giveaways. We've got some prizes around here. And we've got several of the Lance Burton two-card mysteries that are very popular items. It's a little magic card trick anybody can do. I've also got some Lance Burton souvenir uh, books. And these, uh, whoever wins these, they'll be autographed to you and mailed out to you. So we're going to have some trivia later, but if you want to enter the contest right now, we're also going to have another selfie contest. So take out your phone while you're watching the show and make a selfie of yourself watching the uh, watching the on the road. Here, I'll do one right now. I'll show you. Just turn on my phone and I do like this. Oops, wait a minute. Got to turn the camera around and I take a selfie ah, of myself and then. Send that into a social media platform and put this hashtag. It's right here on the road with Lance Burton. You can post that on Facebook. You can post it on Twitter. You can post it on Instagram and uh, and maybe even YouTube because we're we're also on YouTube and uh, we're going to pick the best ones uh, to our social media director. will pick the best ones 
and we'll award you prizes. So do that uh, now or in this first segment of the show and to enter that. And we'll be back later. we got special guests waiting in the wings and uh, lots of fun stuff. So let's not talk anymore. Let's get on with the show, folks. Uh, from 1999, here is Lance Burton, Master Magician on the Road. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Lance Burton. I'm standing in the middle of the Nevada desert, just outside Las Vegas, the magic capital of the world. On a clear day, you can see for 100 miles in every direction. And when you're in a magical place like this, it's a good idea to keep your eyes open at all times. You never know what's going to happen. Come on, let's get started. <laughs> Virgin, you stand accused of being politically incorrect. In that last illusion, you mistreated women, the elderly, and an endangered private. How do you plead? Not guilty. It was just a magic trick. Unacceptable. You are found guilty and sentenced to death. <laughs> <laughs> 
This? What are you talking about? What? Hey, girls, what are you doing? Girls, he has... Smack him! <laughs> he has you hypnotized. Help me! Help me! You can't do this. This is my show. You know what it costs to change the initials in this theater? I know Siegfried and Roy. Girls, come on, I'm telling you. Cut it out. Let me go. Let me go. No. I'll give you a raise. Come on, let me go. All right. All right, call my lawyer. She's going to be on here right now. I want a trial. I want to see a judge. You can't do this. Nobody read me my Miranda rights. All right, call the governor. You know what? He's a friend of mine. He'll give me a stay if I can use it. No. Let go of me. No! Up here, folks! I'm alive! Great job, people. Grab your stuff. We're out of here. Well, Las Vegas is just our first stop, folks. Tonight, you're invited to join me on a magical journey. We'll be visiting the world-famous Magic Castle in Hollywood, California. We'll enjoy the sights, sounds, and magic of my hometown, Louisville, Kentucky. We'll even be on the beach in Florida with the beautiful Alley Landry. We're all packed and ready to hit the road. Stick around. Welcome to the world famous Magic Castle in Hollywood, California. The castle is actually a private club whose members are all magicians. Now normally, non-magicians are not allowed inside unless they are the guest of a member. Don't worry, you folks are my guests tonight. Now this is just the reception area. In order to get actually inside the Magic Castle, well, it's a little tricky. You have to walk over to this owl and you have to say the magic words. Open sesame. The magic castle has been described as the mecca of magic. You may meet an internationally famous magician here. You may see an up and coming magician just starting out or a guy who loves to do card tricks. Everyone here has one thing in common. They all love the art of magic. But Billy, that doesn't work. No. But it led me to discover this, the Mac King Hiccup Cure, and this really does work. You get a big grocery bag, put it over your head. You spin around. <laughs> and your hiccups are gone. Oh, that's fantastic. That's very very wonderful. Oh, hey, Lance, come on over and join us. Mr. King, how are you? Billy, good to see you. Hello, hey. Professor. How are you doing how tonight? You, it's just the young man I've been looking for. Why don't you show Billy that wonderful version of yours at Thurston's Pipe Car Trick? This is fantastic, yeah. Billy. I'll be happy to, Professor. Thank you. 
That's your favorite, huh, Professor? Yes, that's uh, you and Cardinia. Simply the oh, best. Oh, thank you very much. Hey, Professor, can I get you a drink? Lance, you're on next in the Palace of Mystery. I'll be right there. There are three main performing areas at the Magic Castle. The close-up room is where you see magic up close and personal. They all end up under the center cup. The parlor of prestidigitation is a little larger, and what is known as parlor magic is performed there. Oh boy, lady, that was a good one. Right here. Watch that. The Palace of Mystery is where you go to see stage magic. In fact, every great stage magician of our time has appeared there. It's really considered to be an honor to be asked to perform in any of the rooms at the Magic Castle. It's really great to be back here at the Magic Castle. I'd like to do a classic of magic for you. I need to borrow a pocket handkerchief from one of the gentlemen in the audience, a white pocket hanky, anyone at all. It's a little piece of cloth, about this big. You know, oh, yes, sir, thank you. What's, what's your first name? August. August, thank you very much, appreciate that. Oh, good, it's clean, too. Okay. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Uh, You've all heard of Aladdin and his magic genie. I have a genie too, and I'd like you to meet him. Uh, that's the bottle the genie lives in. I know it looks empty right now, uh, but he's in there. He's just invisible most of the time, uh, but sometimes he does make his presence known through an inanimate object like August handkerchief. I believe the genie's with us this week. Max, I'm over here. Look, there's people out there. Wave to them. Jump. Good to see you, Max. It doesn't hurt him, don't worry. That, that hurts him. Gilder, you know when you kill a genie, the first thing you watch out for. Dance and music for Max. Get down, Max. Swing, baby. Swing. That's how they did it in the old days. We do it a little bit different today. You know what you need, Max. That's right. You need a dancing partner if you really want to take advantage of those dancing lessons. Oh, she likes you, Max. But Max, what did you say to her? Sweet talker. Little hanky panky going on, folks. Max, you're some of that genie charm. I think they just need a little privacy. August, don't them. Don't take the knot out till after you leave the theater. You don't want the genie to escape.
We know it's a very strict rule here at the Magic Castle. The rule says every magician has to do a card trick. Let's get this one over with. There's a lovely lady. What's your name, dear? Debbie. Debbie, nice to see you. Just pull out a lucky card. There. Wonderful. And here's another lovely lady. What's your name? Jennifer. Jennifer, take out a card. Great. And your name, sir? Keith. Keith, just pull out a lucky one. Terrific. Now, the only problem with card tricks is it's hard to enjoy the trick if you can't see the cards. You guys in the front can see the cards, no problem. But the people in the back of the theater have problems seeing them. That's why we have our special jumbo deck of cards <laughs> to finish the trick with. We won't use the little cards anymore. Take those home with you. Have fun. Now, these cards are just like normal cards. They're just... They're just a little bit bigger, a little easier to see in the back of the theater. They're also a little more difficult to shuffle. So to speed things up, I shuffled the cards before the show started. Uh, this is a very famous card trick. It's called the rising cards. What happens is you have three people in the audience select cards, and the spectators use their mind to cause their card to rise out of the deck. Now we have a lovely lady here. Show your cards to the people behind you. You guys are gonna be team one. Team one, can I get a yeah? yeah. Okay, you're gonna to work together, ready? Team one, concentrate on the name of your card. Very good, team one, nice and loud, all together. What was the name of your card? Ace of Hearts. Ace of Hearts, team one. <laughs> We have a lady here with a card. Show it to your friend. Show it to the people behind you. You guys are going to be team two. Okay, you ready? Working together. Team two, concentrate on the name of your card. Very good. Team two, all together, nice and loud. What was the name of your card? Five of spades. Five of spades. Five of spades. <laughs> You know the drill, sir. Show the card around. You're going to be team three. Ready, team three. Concentrate on the name of your card. Okay, show it to a few more people. Get some more minds. <laughs> Concentrate, team three. Sometimes it helps if you make your mind a blank first. <laughs> team three, all together. What was your card? Queen of Hearts. Queen of Hearts. Oh, oh, wait a minute. That's different. That's royalty. You have to do this one a little differently. <clears throat> Your Majesty, would you please rise? The Queen of Hearts. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this show. Who was that young magician? Boy, he looks familiar. Boy, he looks young. Um, I have just been informed. We're doing that selfie contest. I have just been informed that uh, <clears throat> Facebook, Facebook hashtag search seems to be broken. So those of you who have posted your selfie with the hashtag, uh, it doesn't seem to be working. And it does it on the desktop, too. So uh, I'm told Instagram and Twitter work fine for the, for the selfie contest. So once again, uh, here's, the, here's the hashtag uh, on your screen. Take a, uh, take a selfie of yourself and put on the road with hashtag on the road with Lance. Uh, I'm told that uh, we, we won't be able to find you on Facebook. But uh, if you can post it on Twitter and Instagram, we will. So, uh, sorry, folks. It seems like uh, Facebook is having a little bit of an issue. Um, now, the, uh, the, the segment you just saw at the Magic Castle, there's a, there's a lot. I love the Magic Castle, of course. And uh, uh, watching that video, uh, there's so many friends. Great thing about doing a TV special, you can get all your friends together. Uh, and I made a quick list of just the people in the lobby that I could, off the top of my head, there was Max Maven in the lobby, who, by the way, the genie's name was Max, and that was named after Max Maven. Uh, Greg Wilson, Bob Massey, Michael Amar, and Princess Irene. Irene Larson was there in the lobby. So that was just so much fun uh, to see all those people together there. And uh, so anyway, uh, people, 
when they see a magician or a magic show, they always give the magician credit and they don't really ever give enough credit to the people doing the hard work behind the scenes, the, the technicians and the assistants. And, and I always like to give credit to those people. And we have a special guest with us tonight. Uh, she was my assistant uh, back at the Hacienda Hotel and at the Monte Carlo Hotel and through all those TV specials and, and all the touring that we did. And she's she's with us tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Joelle Rigetti in the house. Hey, Joelle, how are you? Hold on, your mic is muted. Let me see if I can unmute it. Oh, oh no, or oh, Brian did it. Oh, can you hear us, Joelle? Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm great, Lance. How are you? Good. I, I I survived you trying to hang me in the <laughs> hangman. And there there's I think I think I think Ryan has a photo of uh of you and I in the hangman. If you want to pop that up, Ryan. And there yeah. she is. Joelle, that is 21 years ago. Uh and uh and I survived. So yes, uh, Do you remember the night that you really got slapped in the face? <laughs> Yeah. So, so, so you and Connie were the ones that came over and grabbed me and you tied yeah. my hands and then you would yell, what, smack him. Slap him. Yeah. And, and Connie that was would my magical like, moment. Slap yeah. him. She would do like one of these, but, but tell everybody what happened one night. Well, one night um, we were roughing you up and Connie actually did slap you across the face by accident. And after the show, you called us in the dressing room. We were so scared because we knew that you had a big slap mark on the side of your cheek. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that I, was crazy. I think I even, I think I even, I even said something on stage. I think she hit me, and I, I actually said, "She slapped me. She really slapped me." Yeah. And I looked over, I looked over at the wings to my stage manager, Alan. I went, "Alan, she really slapped me." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my, no, the I things that went the things that went down in that theater. And you know, those were some amazing times. The the audiences were so fabulous. Every night we had sold out crowds. And you know, oddly enough, during that illusion, um, when you would yell out to the audience, we actually had um a drunk man try to come on stage and oh. save you when we were when we yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I'll tell you. Yeah, let's. I, and and by the way, if you're uh, those of you watching, if you want to ask a question, type it in the comments, and we'll try to answer it here before we head into the next segment. If you have a question, oh, especially I see for, you have a, you have an up Joel. and coming magician named Dylan Dutson, who you have to give a shout out to. The up and coming Excellent. magician, Dylan oh, Dutson. Dylan, Dylan says, "Hey, Lance and Joel. Yay! Yeah. Hey, Dylan. How are you? Yeah. Hi, Dylan. <laughs> Great. So on that, up and coming." So on that on that hangman number, uh, before we got to that part of the show, I'd already done a trick with involving the children in the audience. So I knew I knew one of the kids' names in the audience. So let's say the kid's name was Billy. So as they were as they were walking me up the scaffold, I would look in the audience. I, I got my hands tied behind my back. I'd look up. I'd look in the audience. I go, Billy, help me, Billy. They're killed, Billy. And sometimes the kid would run up on stage to try and save yeah. me. It was fantastic. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. But but one night a drunk guy ran. <laughs> one guy a drunk guy. And we had a very stout um maitre D. You know, not only was everybody backstage important, but everybody in the front was important as well. And we all were treated like a family. When you had cast parties, you also included the maitre D's. And there was a stout maitre D that came up and got that guy off stage. And it was you. really funny. We got, got that yeah, drunk guy. Have a little muscle. Now, there, Ryan, there was a comment that was up there just a second ago, but I missed it. What was it say? Please give a shout out to Clark Aldridge. We met in Daytona Beach. Oh, yes, of course. We took the we took the Lance Burton and Friends show to Daytona Beach uh, in yes. November and had a fantastic time um, uh, with our with our touring show. So, so, so Joelle, before we head on to this yeah. next, thank you for joining us and all thank those. Thank you. And those of you who were here for Billy Toppett, of course, will recognize Joelle. She was the she was the female lead. There's the poster behind me of Billy <laughs> Toppett, master <laughs> magician. So uh, uh, those were some of the most amazing memories of my life. Thank you for every moment. It was truly uh, magical. 
Oh, thank you, Joel. And now before we go to the next segment, though, would you like to help me pose a trivia question? I would love to. So we have now we're going to do it different this year. Uh, I'm not going to we're not we're going to announce the winners of the prizes at the end of the broadcast. So but here, if you if you've, you you've got your selfie, so put that hashtag selfie. I'm told it's not going to work on Facebook, but but put it on Twitter and um uh, Instagram, but we do have, there's the selfie hashtag. And now we have a trivia question for the people watching at home. We have a photograph, a screen grab from the show you've just been watching. There it is. And uh, there's the scene you just saw. And here is the question in this screen grab from the TV special. There are seven magicians visible to you. From left to right, can you name all seven magicians? Okay, it appears to be only four, but I assure you there are seven magicians visible in this frame from left to right. Can you name all seven? So type your answer into the comments. If you want to take a photo, a screen grab or a photo of this of this image, do it now if you need a little time to study it, if you think you can figure it out. But there's seven magicians, and we want their names from left to right. And at the end of the at the end of the show, we will announce the winners, and you will receive one of those valuable prizes that I showed you earlier. All right, folks. We hope you're enjoying. We're going to move right along with the next segment. Again, Joelle, thank you for joining us. Thank you, man. Success. And you are, you're still working. You're, I mean, I we're, all, we're all quarantined now. But yes. You were, you were in the show. Oh, uh, the Rat Pack is back show. I'm currently uh, in that show when it's running as soon as we get it back up. So the that's Rat at Pack. the Tuscany. And what, mm -hmm. and what hotel is that at, Joelle? That's at the Tuscany Hotel. Um, it's just right off the strip, but the Rat Pack is back show has been running for many years, and uh, I've been over there for almost five. So when uh, when Vegas reopens, you guys come to Vegas. Go see Joelle. She is performing. The Rat Pack is back. And here's a question from Chaley Unra. Do you tour anymore? Will you come to Sioux City Falls, South Dakota? I am a huge fan. We would love to come to South Dakota. Uh, I am actually, we had a show scheduled in North Dakota uh, in March, and that got postponed because of the quarantine, and it's rescheduled, and I've talked to the casino, and they are saying we are good to go, and that is going to be in June 13th. I'll be in North Dakota, so I will be in your neighborhood, and that information is on my website, LanceBurton.com, so uh, uh we, we are planning on getting back out on the road. And here's from Gabriel. Oh, <laughs> Gabriel. That was, that's so sweet. Gabriel. We, wardrobe mistress. we had so many amazing people in our show. We were like a family, Lance, and we still are. Yes. I think at any given we time still, when we get us all together, we still embrace we, each other. We still are. And Gabriel and Chris got married uh, about two years ago, I think. Yes. And we all went to the wedding and, and Tom Sony walked the bride down the aisle and gave her away. Gabriel, we love you. Yeah. Thank you for love watching. You, Gabriel. And all okay. the Burton's babes, I want to give a shout out to. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're all still in contact with one another. All the Burton's babes. Yeah, wait a minute. I've got photos of the Burton's babes. Stephanie, Jeannie, Connie. Randy, Monique. Oh, yeah. The, oh, here, here, here. I love, here's a photo that I always love with the, with the car. Marcia. Uh, I think, let's see, who, who am I missing? Oh, jo Joanne and um, there's Stephanie and Shelly. Yeah. Shelly and um, gosh, there's so many. There were a lot that came and went um, through that time. Sus I don't know if Susie was. Susie didn't go to the Monte Carlo, but Susie was in there too. Susie Carlopio. She was yeah. in the first TV special. Oh, and Karen, Karen yeah. Harpin, and yeah, um, Karen. yeah, and um, Etta Lynn was in there yeah. for a minute, right? Yeah. I think yeah. I think I have a rare photo of her. Of Etta Lynn? Yeah, oh, yeah, she's Etta Lynn. She's right, <laughs> yes, she's, she's right behind me, right here. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> 
a rare oh, sighting. A rare. Madeline was she was <laughs> in charge of so many wonderful things for us. She made some great parties happen, and not only that, she was an excellent performer. And oh, I know yeah. she's still with you today. We just love Adeline. Which yes, we do. And she's still with. Yeah. Me. All right, yeah. thank you, Joelle. And uh, guys, we're gonna. We're going to continue on. Oh, here's a question. Would you like to have another residency in Las Vegas? Uh, no, I did that. I, I, I had a great time. <laughs> you did, I loved you it. Did I had enough. a great time. But I did, <laughs> did that. So I'm having fun going out and visiting other places. So, yes. Well, thanks. We'll talk to you soon. Take okay, care. Okay, love you, Lance. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay, folks, we're going to continue on with the show. Uh, we will be back in, uh, in the next break. So enjoy On the Road. Now, I know you're all very excited about our little excursion to the beach here in we all want to have a good time, but we also have to focus on completing our mission. Well, now remember, we're here to do a show. So have fun, but don't forget to focus on your job. And one more thing, don't forget your sunscreen. Magic Commandos, go get them! In any military operation like the one today, the most important thing is to make sure you're familiar with the battle terrain and you know the nature of the indigenous civilian population. Let's go on a little reconnaissance mission. I'm Lance Burton. I'm the beach magician. Nice to see you. Some native Floridians. I love your outfit. You have a little hair on your dress there. It's a, it's a little rabbit. There's another one. Let me get that one away too. Now uh, this is a this is a magic rabbit. Hold your hands out like that. This is Peter Rabbit. This is his wife Gladys. They do little magic tricks. I'm going to hold on to Peter Rabbit and I want you to hold on to Gladys. Squeeze real tight. Peter's at the top of the hill. He wants to go visit his wife, but he doesn't want all the nosy neighbors to see him. I have to make him invisible like that. <laughs> Did you feel anything happen inside your hand? Slowly open up. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh that's good. <laughs> Here, I'll do it again. You like that one, huh? I'll let you hold both of them. One will jump from your hand into my hand. Squeeze tight. All you have to do is count to five out loud. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, you have to say the magic words. You have to say, Peter Rabbit, go to town. Peter Rabbit, go to town. Did you feel anything that time? Nothing? Slowly open your hand up. Let's see. Oh, they multiplied. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? They multiplied. They had, oh, they had little <laughs> baby little rabbits. Baby rabbit. Well, I guess Peter Rabbit went to town. Hold your arms out straight like that, right in front of you. And you folks at home, you can do this too. It'll work for you too. It's an interactive part of the show, but you have to participate. Don't be embarrassed. We'll all do it. Arms out. Turn your thumbs pointing down. Cross your arms. Lock your fingers together like that. That's it. Now wiggle your right pinky. You have to think of that. It's this one here. That, <laughs> that one. That's right. All right. Thumbs down. Arms crossed. Right pinky. Now here's a, this one's a little harder. Wiggle your left thumb. Left, that's it, that's it. Now here's the hard one. Squeeze tight, don't let go. Twist straight out like that. Don't let go though. You can't get loose. Just that's twist impossible. It. Twist it. You'll feel the bone snap just before. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> hey, Lance. Lance, Allie Landry's here. It's time to do the beach show. Oh, oh let's go, let's go. I'm all excited about this one. Hi, folks. It's great to be here in Florida. Welcome to our little traveling magic show. Uh, you know, when you're a magician, people ask you strange questions all the time. Now, the most common question that men ask is, can you make my wife disappear? <laughs> the most common question women ask is, uh, can you make me float in the air? Now, there's something we can work with. In fact, I have this new trick. It's called the anti-gravity board. And if you're laying on the board while it's floating in the air, then you're sort of floating in the air. And here's my special guest star to try it today. 
the beautiful and talented Allie Landry, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Allie. Hi, Lance. How you doing? Great. Right? Welcome to Florida. Good. Thank you for having me. Now, we all know that you're a beautiful actress and that you studied uh, dancing and gymnastics. Right. I also hear you did a magic act at one time. I certainly did. I guess I was about 11, and I was in the local talent show, and I wanted to do magic. So I did the trick where you pull the pigeon out of, um, I had this thing of ribbons, and I made the pigeon disappear, and I did a cane trick. It was great. Well, then this is going to be a piece of cake for Good. you. Have you ever floated in the air? Never, but I'm it's, ready. It's easy. Okay. Two things to remember. Okay. Smile. Okay. You got that one. Yeah. All right. Good. Okay. Now. That's it. Smile. Okay. Best. He's got it. Step right okay. over the. Step right over it. here, and uh, hold the magic carpet. You can take your shoes off if you want, and any other piece of clothing you feel comfortable removing. Okay, shoes are far. Give me just a second here to set this up, and it'll be something you'll remember for the rest of your life. We hope. There's that board I was telling you about. Now there's nothing to worry about. It's really solid. Let me have the carpet. It's very safe. Grab hold of the carpet. Perfect. Unfold it to the front like that. Step around here to the front. You're going to stay right here. Sit on the board. That's it. Swing your feet up onto this end. And just recline back. Perfect. Hug your elbows. Cross your feet. Nice toe polish, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> and just remain perfectly still. Don't play the muscle. Feel the bone snap just no, before. I feel my wrist is about to pop. <laughs> well, I quit. It's not working. You don't want to play with this anymore. I can't. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is really weird. You're freaking me out right here. There you go. Now you go. I I love that. I love the beach segment. That, that's one of my favorite segments I ever did on television. And Allie Landry, uh, the girl there, she some of you will remember her. She she did the Doritos commercial. She was the Doritos girl. And I think she was Miss USA. What a sweet girl. What a terrific actress and just a fun personality. And and we I did the arm twisting thing with her, that, that thing at the end. And she that wasn't scripted. She kept saying, do it again, do it again. So I kept I think I got her. I got her three or four times in a row with it. So you could see her getting more and more animated uh, each time. So that was that was just a fun segment. Uh, before I forget, uh, yeah, I'm loving having you guys' questions. Just keep typing them in, and we'll get as to as many as we can. We have a really fun guest right now, and I'm so excited about this segment. And oh, hey, there's my buddy Scott Wells. Hey, what's he saying? Boy, that would be cool if you had Walter Zaney Blaney as a guest tonight. Well, Scott, you know, that is, you are right. Uh, uh, boy, I wish I'd have talked to you before we did this because, you know, you're absolutely right. People see me do that levitation. That's the Zaney Blaney ladder levitation. And, 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 uh, but they don't know that, you know, people see me do that on TV or in a live show or in my touring show. And people, you know, maybe people are curious where that came from. And, and the guy who invented that is Walter Zaney Blaney, Walter Blaney. He lives down in Texas. He's 91 years old. And guess what, Scott? You read my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my special guest star, Walter Blaney in the house. Walter! 
Well, hello. hello. Walter, how are you, pal? Fine. You know, amazingly, just a second ago after watching that, this rolled into view. Okay. <laughs> here it is. And my one of the girls must have let it go. It must have rolled down the beach. Yeah. Uh, my friend, it is so good to see you, and uh, I'm so I'm so happy that. And look, here's a comment. Uh, Michael Knight says that is his favorite illusion: the zany Blaney ladder levitation. It's my favorite, so Walter. Uh, especially yeah, it's your favorite. Yeah. I I I, I want to ask you about about your process and and how you invent. First of all, Walter, uh, what year you you're coming to us from your home there in Texas, and you for years you performed all over the United States, and and you were the the Texas ambassador to the world. Um, but what year did you invent? that uh, Blaney levitation. What what year did you first perform it? Can you give us a little of the backstory on that? Yeah, first of all, I, I'm sitting at my desk looking at my computer, and doggone, if, look what I found under the desk. Oh! oh. <laughs> it's creepy. Yeah, I don't know the <laughs> <laughs> oh, Walter, I I love that. I, you know, the first time the first time we ever had dinner together, I think I was I think I was, I came down to Houston and played Magic Island, and we we went out uh, we went out to get a bite to eat. It was me and you and some other people, and yep. you do you did that trick, and and uh, uh, I I remember seeing you. Well, <laughs> I I remember the first time I saw you perform was at an Abbott's Magic Convention, and and you did the the Vanishing Bird Cage, and and you know that's that's one of my favorite tricks. Also, I do the I do the Vanishing Bird Cage you in do. my show, but you you do it so you do it better than anybody. You you've been doing that so long, and uh, uh, but but now get getting back to the levitate. What year did you first premiere the the levitation, the Blaney levitation? IBM International Convention in Des Moines, Iowa, in 1965. My wife and I drove up, and uh, we told them we have a new uh, suspension. It was called a suspension back then, but it was the yes. gravity board. And uh, so I don't know what, what you look up a little bit. There. Move up. Wow! Look, yeah, there's some photos of you, Walter, from back back in the day. Oh, okay. And and you used the, I remember you used a big giant Texas rabbit in your act. You had this 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 enormous rabbit, and yeah. I think we have I think we have some photos of you with the levitation and and with a little model that you built. Now look at that that on the right there you've got a little a little tiny version. So you you built the model first. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I got the idea. I, I built a new kind of a suspension. It was somewhat like Abbott's Super X Levitation, but you can't walk away from it. And I figured a way to walk away from it. And so the girl was really in the air floating, and it was my wife back at that point. And so I oh wait a minute you you didn't you didn't float a girl from the audience in the beginning? No, uh, because oh. I hadn't invented the trick yet. So yeah. I oh yeah. Invented. But at any rate, uh, I, I I did the old fashioned version, and it fooled people. Uh, Everywhere for like 15 years, I was doing it. And one night, I made the secret move, and all of a sudden, I got this idea. And you know how, when you're doing a performance, it, I think I've got a new good idea. You were. And at the end of the show, what was that idea? You can't remember it. Yeah, yeah. You, it, it's a funny line that, that happened. I want to keep it in the act, and you can't remember it. Yeah. So at the end of that show, I ran to the closest piece of paper and pencil and jotted down a little diagram and everything of my idea. So I had it. And I went home and I built that little model. Oh. And, uh, the little model ended up being very much like the final thing. It was 50 yep. years later in six, 1965 ah. we built the real thing. Now t and, tell me tell me about that first performance at the IBM convention. That's where you premiered the illusion? I, I took it up to Des Moines. Yes. On a Friday night, another friend, Gene DeGene, did a new uh, suspension and the uh, hotel had a platform about two and a half feet high and nobody could see it and he was just wasted you know 
and the people would stand up trying to see it. Sit down and you're in front of me, I can't see. Oh, but yeah. Nobody saw it. Oh. So I spent the next day hunting the hotel for another foot high platform that we could put on that platform and oh. it for everybody to see. And that saved the show. And I did it, and they went crazy. They were all fooled. And they kept applauding and applauding, and it was a big thrill. And finally, Jack Channon was the MC, and I whispered to him when he came out to take me off, and they kept on applauding. I said, "There, it's a joke, isn't it? They're pulling my leg. They said, you made a joke. Let's all really keep clapping for Walter. It'll be a funny, funny stunt. And Jack said, no, Walter, they're fooled. Nobody knows how you did it. I'm backstage, and I don't know how you do it. <laughs> and that went on and on. And then I got invited up to uh, Abbott's the next month. I was in uh, May or June. And in, uh, in July, at Abbott's get-together, I yes. did there, and there's the same reaction. Everybody went ah. crazy, yeah. And uh, Jack Gwynn was one of my boyhood idols. You were. And I saw him again. And he came over and he says, I'm fooled. I and Jack, Jack Wynn, so just so everybody, not everyone is, is a magic historian that's watching this. So Jack Wynn invented the Super X levitation. Is that correct, Walter? No, not, not exactly. He had a different one. It was just oh. different. Yeah. And, and, and it was considered the best suspension in the magic world. Yeah. So he came over and he says, now, I, I suppose we have had the best suspension for years and years. And now I see one and I'm fooled by it. And I said, Jack, can I show it to you? He said, no, you shouldn't show that to anybody. And I said, well, but you're my, my boyhood idol. You remember back in Austin when we got when I met you and I was just in love with your show and everything? He said, yeah, I remember we, we had breakfast and talked about it and everything. And I said, well, anyway, it's just uh, uh, if I could show it to you, it would be a thrill to me. Would you like to see it? And I, well, he said, well, sure, yeah. So we got in a, my station wagon and drove about five or six blocks away from the American Legion Hall where everybody was chatting, having fun. And I got it out of my car and put it on the sidewalk in front of the Colon, Michigan post office. <laughs> we the street light that lit us up. So I yeah. to Jack and he says, holy cow, you can't do what you just did because of this and that. And I said, yeah, but it's not this and that. It's that and this. Uh, yeah. And you, oh, yeah. You did, it, you did it on the sidewalk for him. And, and I learned later that at the same hour, 3 a.m., there was a good friend, Dennis Loomis, who is well known in magic. He sure. was a teenage, young teenage magician from Canada with him, a good friend of his. And they left the thing and went to the Washateria, about two blocks from where I was showing this on the street to Jack Gwynn. And they were trying to draw diagrams. Well, he did this and then he did that. They couldn't figure it out or anything. <laughs> so it turned out that that teenage magician was, was, uh, Doug Henning. <laughs> Doug Henning. It was Doug Henning before, yeah. before Doug Henning was Doug Henning. <laughs> that was the other thing. So that came about, I learned later. And so, uh, when I first met Doug Henning after a show, uh, you know, the magic show in New York and gave him a hug and everything. He was telling me how thrilled he was to meet me because he was so fooled by my levitation. Uh, Doug was a sweet man. And, and there was just a comment up here, Walter. Oscar, I think Oscar Munez uh, gave a shout out to you. Oscar, there he is. Walter, my fellow Texan. Good to see you, my friend. And Oscar is our uh, past uh, president of the IBM. So thank you for joining us. Yeah, he's a good friend and a good, good, good guy. Good well, Wal Yes, he is. And Walter, thank you for joining us. And thank you for uh, inventing that levitation and, and also to releasing it to the Magic Fraternity. Because mm -hmm. as soon as you put them out on sale uh, uh, back in the, I guess it was the 90s sometime, I bought one because I, I knew what a great illusion it was. I have done that trick in my live show. I've done it at my touring show. I've done it on talk shows. And I did it on the TV special. And it's... It is. What do you got? What do you got there, Walter? Oh no, I'm sorry. I, I was just sipping a little Texas milk. Oh, okay. You had yeah. the milk and the, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, geez. <laughs> I'm sorry. But we do have good Texas milk. Yeah, I, I never, I never knew that, Walter. What that? 
Uh, here we go. Uh, Jenny is asking, when someone develops an illusion, do other magicians have to pay to replicate it? Yeah, Jenny, normally when a, someone invents a trick like uh, like Walter, the ethical thing is what that's Walter's trick, so he gets to do it. And then if he decides he wants to release that, then he may he may sell the rights to it or he may build the prop and sell it. And and Walter Walter was the only one doing it for a long time. But but when he when he decided he was going to release it, I I immediately went out and bought one and 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 it was I was so excited it everywhere I do it, it 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 gets great reaction and and I wanted to the great thing about the trick you invented, Walter, is <clears throat> you can do it in practically any circumstance. And that's why I wanted to do it at the beach. And that's why we went to the beach in that segment, because yeah. I was thinking, where can I where can I do the levitation that would seem impossible? And I thought, well, let's do it at the beach outside with sand and water in, in the open. So it was a it really it really was the best possible trick to do. In that, uh, and and uh, in that, oh look at this. Uh, Daniel says Walter came prepared with a full set. Love it, Walter. You are you are beloved in the magic world, and and uh, we we all love you, and we all respect you and what you've done. I thank you so much. Do you have any parting words for us? Any parting words of wisdom? But the the ladder levitation it changed my life. It was just a uh, you know it just got me into magic all the way to the top of all the TV shows and everything because of that trick, you know. And at FISM in Amsterdam, I floated Irene Larson on the board. Oh, It was nice. like 3,000 magicians from 33 countries. Everybody had heard about it, and a lot of people came just to see it, and they were happy, they said, because they were totally fooled. Fantastic. And the fooled magicians and all the space scientists have been fooled by it engineers that's right you you performed for the nasa astronauts at yeah. one point mercury astronauts all became good friends those seven early guys that risked their lives to you know get us into the space effort and uh, i did their 25th anniversary and flew to maria carpenter five feet away you know just oh, 18 people fantastic just the thrill i got to have so much fun with it all these years and I'm tickled to death that you wanted to do it, and you did it so perfectly at the beach there. And then David Copperfield did it on his show, and he's my good, good friend. Uh, so the top guys like you and Copperfield and, and so on, I got to be good friends with because of that trick. Well, Walter, we love you. You are a, uh, you are a national treasure. And uh, we wish you we wish you good health and, and, and good luck. And thank you for joining us today. Well, I thank you, Lance. It's a real pleasure. Thank so, you, Walter. And keep after it. Okay. Adios. God bless. Bye -bye. Thank you. Wow. Wow. I'm just so excited to have Walter uh, on today. And, and uh, Scott Wells, you and I were having the same uh, same same thought. And Dan says, what a privilege to spend time with Zany Blaney. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Any Anytime I can hang out with Walter Blaney and, 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 and chat with him, it's a good day for me. So before we go to the next segment, we're, we're powering through the show. What do you say we do another trivia question? Uh, you had the last question with the photos to name the seven magicians. So here is our next trivia question. Aha, here we go. Some of you might know this. <clears throat> what was the opening date of Lance Burton Master Magician Show at the Monte Carlo Hotel in Las Vegas. Hey, I bet some of you watching were there that night. What was the opening date of Lance Burton Master Magician Show at the Monte Carlo Hotel in Vegas? If you know the answer, type it in comments. And uh, when we get to the end of the show here, we will uh, announce the winners. Okay, folks, we're back at it. Here it is. Uh, we're continuing on with uh, On the Road. Enjoy the show. If there's no kids in the audience, I'll do those same tricks with adults. But it's not as much fun, I don't think. Really. Just getting warmed up, folks. There's more great magic ahead. Watch your step there, Connie. 
We'll be making a stop in my hometown, Louisville, Kentucky. Hi, Joel. You'll meet one of the best young magicians in the world, and I'm even working on a way to magically transport my touring bus. You don't want to miss that one. Stay tuned, folks. It was a very strange and yet wonderful feeling being back in my hometown, Louisville, Kentucky. This was where I was born and raised. This is the place where I first started performing magic, performing at children's birthday parties, churches, schools, nightclubs. This is the land of Daniel Boone, the Kentucky Derby. This is home. Squeeze real tight. Yeah, just one hand there. Just yeah. You feel anything? Slowly open up there. <laughs> How'd you do that? <laughs> That's amazing. Squeeze tight. Twist, come out in front like this. I can do that. Yeah, yeah, just right, right out in front. There you go. <laughs> You'll hear the bone snap. Just. Like... <laughs> I want to see how long you tried it. That was very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Eighteen years ago, I left home. I drove out west in a broken-down car with a leaky radiator. Just me, my tuxedo, and seven doves. Now I'm back. Is it, is it, that's not Bill, is yeah. it? Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> Let me pull it off for you. Oh. <laughs> I still have the tux and the doves. The leaky radiator gave out years ago. Hello. Oh. I'm Lance Burton. George Roberts. Nice to see you. You own this house now? I sure do. I bought yeah. it from your parents. Oh, nice to see you. I used to have curtains right. Well, this wall wasn't here. I had curtains right here, and I would. This was my little stage area to practice. Now, if they slowly open your hand up, let's see what happens. Slowly. I'll be honest with you. I was really nervous about coming home to perform for the hometown crowd. How would they react? Would they accept me back? Would they even show up at all? Would I put on a good show or would I choke? Ladies and gentlemen, master magician, Lance Burton. As it turns out, all my fears were unfounded. Maybe the old saying is wrong. Maybe you can go home again. Wonderful to be here. You know, it's great doing magic in a beautiful theater, like the one we have here at the Kentucky Center for the Arts. I didn't always have a nice place to do my magic. I started working nightclubs when I was 17 years old. Worked a lot of dives, a lot of unsavory type places. Uh, you know, Frank Sinatra always considered himself to be a saloon singer. Let's dream to the magic and the mystery of you. I guess that makes me a saloon sorcerer. There's so many choices in life you see. Now, no matter how successful Sinatra got, he always included a saloon song in his concerts. One day your glass is empty, the next day it's full. With that in mind, I'd like to show you the ultimate saloon magic trick. It seems you always disappear from me. This is called the bottle and glass trick. The idea is very simple. It's to make the glass go from this side of the table 
to this side of the table and to make the bottle go from this side of the table over to Sorry, folks, I seem to have packed too many bottles. I'll have to start over. Uh, it's called the bottle and glass trick. Uh, the, you know, I should explain, uh, when you're doing magic with breakable things like bottles and glasses, you always need to have extras around backstage in case of accidents. That's why we had an extra bottle. Uh, the idea of the trick is very simple. It's to make the bottle go from this side to this side and the glass go from this side to this side. You can't touch them, though. That's why you have the two tubes. All you do is snap your fingers and they change places. Yep, it worked. <laughs> That's the easy part. The hard part is to make them go back. I should explain this trick works better if the audience has consumed the contents of the bottle before you start. If you're sober, you don't believe me when I tell you it's very easy to make them change places. It's very difficult to make them go back. Just remember, tube number one always goes over the bottle. Tube number two, <laughs> sorry folks, I seem to have packed too many bottles. Tube number two goes over the glass, which becomes a bottle. The bottle becomes a glass. Number one covers the bottle. Number two, too many bottles. Number two covers the glass, which becomes a bottle. The bottle becomes a glass. Frank Sinatra would have loved that trick. You know, if Sinatra had done this trick, I'll bet he could do it with just one tube. The glass becomes a bottle, the bottle becomes a glass. If you do it that way, though, I should point out, you do have to have an extra bottle, which the audience is unaware of. Bottle, glass, glass bottle, as long as you have an extra bottle hidden away. Oh, it'll work with either tube. Makes no difference as long as you have an extra bottle hidden away. Oh, I know, you think I can't do the trick unless I use two bottles. I'll prove I can do the trick with just one bottle. I'll mark the bottle with the little yellow handkerchief. Now, you can tell that bottle apart from all the rest. And when the glass and the bottle change places, you'll know it's the same bottle. That's the easy part. The hard part is to make them go back. <laughs> well, if you do it that way, you need two extra bottles. When you see a bottle in a glass, you always hear a toast. Till then, I guess I'll buy another round. May the good Lord take a liking to you, but not too soon. Thanks, Lance. You're marvelous. Simply marvelous. Sinatra lover. Thank you. You're very kind. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. You know, folks, I've been very fortunate. I've been blessed. I've been given the opportunity to share my magic with people all over the world. But it all started right here in my hometown. So I thought, since Louisville was lucky for me, it might be lucky for another young magician uh, just getting his start. Each year on my show, I try to introduce a new talented young magician to the world. This young man is 18 years old. He hails from Miami, Florida. I know you're going to enjoy the magic of Dylan Ace.
on ice, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I've always been interested in the history of magic. Uh, back in the 1920s, there was an English magician. His name was P.T. Selbit. There's a name you've never heard of. I know you haven't heard of P.T. Selbit, but you have all heard of his trick. He called it sawing a woman in half. We're going to do it a little differently tonight. Uh, this is Tommy, and this is Julianne, and this is called sawing a couple into eight pieces. <laughs> Let's go on this time. The pin goes over here. You got him backwards. Pull him off. Marcia. You're all cheaters. That, that, that always uh, cracked me up. That was just something we shot on the street and was improvised. That, was, that man was really funny. Hey, so you got to see the, the segment we shot in my hometown, Louisville, Kentucky, and you got to meet a really talented young magician, 18-year-old Dylan Ace. Guess who we have as a special guest star? Let me introduce to you Dylan Ace. The uh, the guest star from On the Road. Hey, Dylan, how are you? Yeah. Good to see you. Hey, let me see. <laughs> let's see your outfit there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got a picture of a very young magician on on your shirt. <laughs> Good to see. I think you are. We are. Is his microphone muted? Hold on. Let me check. Dylan. No, you're okay. Can you hear me, Dylan? 
Yeah, can you hear me? Oh yeah, there you are. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we, got a, we got a slight delay in the picture and the, the the audio. That's okay. I maybe it'll catch up. So you you were eighteen, is that right? When we shot that? Yeah, I was eighteen. It was awesome. It was fun. So so you're th you're thirty eight now somewhere. Yeah, thirty eight. And you're still doing magic. Yeah, I'm still doing magic. I've been doing a lot of uh, corporate shows, and here in Miami, I've been appearing a lot on Latin TV. Although you were the first. Um, big TV appearance I had. It was funny when I got the TV appearance with you, that was the first thing on my promo video. Yeah. I sent it to Royal Caribbean. I immediately got hired. The oh. entertainment director was a big fan of yours. So oh. she's that's where it's was like, Oh, you're hired. Let's try you out. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I, I mean, I know you're, I was just asking. So the, to, to introduce yourself to the other, I, I know you're still doing matching and stuff. I've, I've been keeping tabs on you all these years. And also what I found interesting, you live in Miami and you're bilingual, and so you perform in English and Spanish. So, so you you double yeah. your opportunities for shows. To talk, tell us a little about that, and some of the you. And you're on a, a Spanish speaking television on a regular basis. Yeah, and the way I got into Spanish speaking television on a regular basis is that although I don't promote it, they um use me as a as when someone cancels, they'll call me because I'm here in Miami. So I'm like the cancellation guy, but I don't tell people that part of my marketing. <laughs> Fantastic. And, and so that's I, how I get a lot of TV appearances. Yeah, that, that's how you do. I think Joel yeah. just said just said hi to you. I just think I just oh hi Joel. Yeah, <laughs> there she is. Yes, you re, you remember Joel? Yeah, yeah, it was really nice when we were there in Louisville. That's a great way to rack up a lot of television appearance. And I tell you what, my my mentor Tom Sony, he did the same thing with the Merv Griffin show back in the seventies. He did like twenty or thirty appearances because he was their guy that they called when when a guest uh, uh, dropped out on him, and he would he would finish his show. He'd drive into L.A. and appear on the show. So he got a lot of a lot of stuff under his belt. Well, Dylan, I, I I know you are a busy magician and you're you're working. Well, we're all sitting home right now, but as, as soon as we go back to work, uh, I'm just so happy to catch up with you again and and see you after all these years and see that you're still in the magic. And uh, I know your uh, uh, your your mentor was my good friend Fantasio, uh, yeah. who we all miss, and uh, and. Uh, you know, this is the great thing about magic that the the connections that we make and the the friendships that we make. And uh, Fantasio was a guy that that uh, I knew his name since I was twelve years old, and, and with his uh, Fantasio candles. And a few years ago, they they gave him the Master's Fellowship at the Academy of Magical Arts, and and I was I was I had the great honor to go and present the award to him. And uh, yeah, he was really happy about that. So I, I he uh, I know I know he's looking down on us and he's very proud of you and and everything you've done and and I just want you to know I'm very proud of you and the success and, and that you've made of yourself and 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 I know you've worked hard and continued success. Thank you, thank you so much, and thanks for giving me my big break. Ah, you're welcome. <laughs> you had the talent. All I did was point a camera on you. Thank you. All right, thanks thanks for dropping by, Dylan. Thanks. Take Bye. Care. Thank you. We're trying to keep this thing rolling, folks, because I know I'm going way over uh, uh, what, what, what I was expecting to do. But we do have another guest that I'm really super excited about. So that segment, you saw me do the multiplying bottles. You saw Dylan Ace. And then you saw me do uh, the double mismade lady. And again, just like we had Walter Blaney on earlier, he's the guy that invented that levitation you saw me do. The Miss Made Lady is a classic. It's considered a classic magic trick now. Well, we have the guy that invented it and the guy that came up with it and did it back in the day. I'm so excited. My good friend Chuck Jones is in the yeah, house. Hi, Lance. How are you? Chuck, <laughs> how are you? Good to see you. And you're you're at your home in California. That's right. And uh, And you're... You're, you're hopefully you're staying away from people, quarantining yeah. yourself. And uh, thank you for coming on. Oh, that's uh, my pleasure. So uh, I have to congratulate you because you took the mismade girl one step further by doing the double. And, and uh, one of the problems with mismade girl was always uh, the climax of the trick was in the middle of the trick. Yes. And then you had to take the boxes apart and put them back together uh, and you had to restore the girl. And uh, and that was almost disappointing. You know, it took, took so long. So but now uh, with uh, the version we just saw, uh, you have one punch in the middle 
and the end is it's a double punch. And you get you a double punch. Half yeah. woman, half guy. Now I would love to take credit to, to tell you that I that I came up with it, but it was based on other things people had done. Of course, of course, uh, my friend Channing Pollock did a double sawing, and Billy McComb apparently did a double sawing back in the day. And when I was doing the Paul Daniels show, I saw Paul Daniels do a double mismade lady. And he had two two complete props. And uh, so so when I had the idea that I wanted to do it, I called uh, I called Paul Daniels and I got his permission to do double mismade. I talked to Channing, I got his permission. I talked to Billy, I got his permission. I called you, and you were kind enough to give me permission and even gave me your up updated work on the trick, which not everybody gets. So I feel very honored. Uh, that that you allowed me to do, and I know we can't talk about all the technical details, but but you know what I want to know is tell us take first of all I think we've got some photos here of you doing the uh, trick back when you first did. Tell us what year was it you first uh, debuted it? Uh, it would have been 1969. It would have been at the It's Magic show produced by uh, Milt Larson, and uh, but we developed the trick uh, in 1968. And uh, it came about because we were doing what we call uh, club dates. Club dates yeah. were playing, uh, 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 you, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, an Elks Club one day and a, a Masonic Lodge the next day. Sure, it's, private, it's private shows for groups and people. Yeah, well, yeah. And, and there's a lot of work in Los Angeles in the uh, late 60s doing that. And of course, in order to break into that field, we needed a, a new illusion. Everybody was doing the, the uh, sub trunk. So I said to Jan, Abbott's put out a, an illusion called the divided lady. Uh, you put a girl in a cabinet, fold it over, uh, put two blades in, fold it over, and separate the two boxes. And of course, we didn't know anything about the zigzag. Uh, that hadn't really been released yet. So uh, I said, Jan, you're small enough we could probably do it with three boxes. And then Jan said, <laughs> wouldn't it be funny if you put the three boxes together the wrong way? And then I said, <laughs> well, that'll only work if you can see the girl mixed up, maybe a little window or a door that you can open up. And so this, uh, this is the way it developed. And then uh, I had a, a meeting, uh, with, I performed in the, the same show with uh, Bev Bergeron. Yes. And I said, Bev, I know I could do this with four boxes and I know I can do it with three. But uh, Mark Wilson has a production trick with four boxes. He said, no, it's not the same trick uh, and you should do it with four boxes. So uh, I went home, made a mock-up out of uh, uh, cheap plywood and uh, drew up sketches and took it to Owen Magic, and Owen Magic built the first Miss May girl. Uh, and then six years went by, and everybody copied the Miss May girl, <laughs> and they didn't call and ask permission. Oh. So uh, I decided I'd have to reinvent this. And one of the problems was the climax in the middle of the trick. Yeah. That meant we had to get to the ending of the trick really fast. Yes. And so I figured out a way that we could r restore the girl without having to take the boxes apart. Uh, the problem with that was, how would the girl get restored? How does she get rearranged if you don't rearrange the boxes? So I came up with the idea of numbers on the boxes. And of course, the, the number sequence is out of order when the girl, when the boxes are mixed up. Uh, and then by just taking the numbers and rearranging the numbers, so it read one, two, three, four again, I snapped the doors open and Jan popped out. And guess what? We did it in about 20 seconds. Yeah. yeah. From the time I showed her mixed up, we closed the doors. I, I eliminated three blades. We had six originally, and that helped. And we yeah, changed yeah. the choreography. And all of a sudden, it was uh, a new Miss Made Girl. So, nice. Yeah. And that's what and that's what you gave me permission to use. Is the uh, I didn't use the numbers. I used the silhouettes. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. But fantastic. And, and, and is Jan and there with you? Yeah. Uh, she's not here right now. Sorry oh. about that. <laughs> I know Please you tell well, her I said hi and I send my love. I will. I will. And here's what she said. Tell Lance I haven't done my hair, couldn't do any makeup, and I don't have a thing to wear. So that, that's it. But uh, yeah, truly, Jan was the, the inspiration behind the trick. And, and it took several people to help work out the mechanics. Oh, sure. Uh, as everything in magic one thing evolves out of another, out of another, out of another, and uh, uh, you know, well, like a double mismade girl uh, that somebody does, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, yeah, so that was the first. First, uh, I developed a number of original illusions after that. But uh, oh, and the second mismade girl, I built myself. Ah. <laughs> I wasn't taking any chances. <laughs> and magic builder build it. And I, understand. I understand. Well, Chuck, it is it, it it is a great illusion, and I always love performing it, and it always got a big reaction. It's a very consistent and and like you say, speeding up that ending, just switching the things around, uh, uh really, really, really improves the trick. And anyway, you invented a you invented an instant classic. And we got some comments. Uh, William says, ladies and gentlemen, the pioneer of American <laughs> illusionist. There he is, Chuck Jones. All right. I couldn't put it, I couldn't put it better myself, Chuck. And hold on, here we go. Uh, Mark Wilson and Chuck Jones, my heroes of magic when I was a boy. Thank you so much, Lance, Mark, and Chuck. And that's from Bob Bird. And thank you, Bob. What you may not uh, have even known, I started in the business with a uh, kiddie television show in Los Angeles. Oh. And I did that for three years. Yeah. Uh, that was in the early 60s, 63, four, five. Uh, and then we wanted to break into the business and get away from kids' magic. Sure. And, uh, and that was the reason for developing this made girl. Sure. Fielding West, same thing. He had a he had a Saturday morning kids show down in Jacksonville, Florida. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Well, actually, there were a lot of guys that yeah. started with a, a kid show on television. Well, Chuck, I, I thank you for all the stuff you've done with Magic, and I know you're still working. I know you're still out there. You go to you go to uh, uh, you go over to New Zealand every year, and you work at Magic years. Castle. Yeah, and here, years we've been doing that. Jim Fitzjimmons says, "Mr. Jones, thank you for your contributions to our art." Yes, we do. We thank. And, th and we thank you for stopping by today to talk with us, Chuck. And please give Jan my love, and I hope to see you in person real soon. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Take care. Wow, Chuck Jones. This is so, this is so cool to have, to have all these guys on the show. I hope you guys are finding this interesting as I am because I'm just – okay, we've been, gone, we've been going like an hour and a half now, so we're getting ready to go into the last segment, folks. And then we're going to give the prizes away. And all right, we'll do one more trivia question. If you're ready, get ready. And you, you can type the answer in the comments. One more trivia question. I have it here. Oops, here it is. Are you ready? Where was the last place Lance Burton and friends performed before the quarantine? <laughs> I know some of you know the answer because some of you were there. Where was the last place Lance Burton and Friends performed before the quarantine hit? That's that's our last trivia question. Put your answer in the comments, and I'll see you after this last segment. We got uh, this last little segment and credits, and they're quick, and then we'll come back and give prizes away. Enjoy the rest of the show. stop on the tour. I know everyone's anxious to get home, especially the girls. You know, we promised Shelly we'd be at her baby shower. Mm -hmm. We're never going to make a plan. Oh, I think so. Look, I have a plan. I've made some modifications to the bus. We're going to use a little magic to transport you from inside the bus back home to Las Vegas. Sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. <laughs> 
Okay guys, the other round. Austin, you got the map? Here's the plan. We're here in Boston. The girls need to get back home here to Las Vegas. So, the way I see it, the fastest way to do this is we construct a magic box around the bus. We shoot off a little pyro. The girls disappear from inside the bus. They reappear back here in Las Vegas. No problem. Bob. Okay, Dave, you're on pyro. Linda, Sam, you're on the panel in the back. Guys, grab a corner. Looks like we got everything under control out here. I just need to do a final check on the girls. Okay, girls. Now, there's nothing to worry about. In a few moments, you're all going to be home. Yeah. You're going to disappear from inside the bus and reappear back in Las Vegas. Right. Now, you may be thinking that the girls aren't really going to disappear. You may think they're going to try and sneak out the back of the bus. Well, first of all, there's no door on the back of the bus. Second of all, lift the back panel up, guys. We're moving this panel into position to keep the girls from exiting in that direction. We also have panels on the sides to keep the girls from going off to the left or the right. Raise the front panel up, guys. Let's talk a little bit about the floor. Solid concrete. No way for anyone to go down. And of course, you can see above the bus at all times. They can't go left or right, front or back, up or down. Magic is the only way to do this. Pyro! Drop the front panel! Drop the sides! Drop the back! Yeah! Yeah! Magic Commandos! We did it again! Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 guys. Uh, the girls disappeared. Yeah. But so did the bus. How are we going to get home? Okay, cell phone, cell phone. All right, all right. I'm calling a cab. I'm calling a cab. A limo. Okay, a limo. Yeah, I need the number of a limo company. I don't know, Boston limo? Chowderhead limo? No, no, we're not 50 miles from home. We're 1,550 miles from home. Hi, folks. I hope you've enjoyed our little journey this evening. We're just studying the map here, trying to find our way back home. I'm not worried. I'm even worried. Thanks for watching. Good night. God bless. See you next time. Okay, that was the show. So yeah, that was a short segment. So we're not doing too bad on time. This is Rocky. He wanted to stop by and help give out prizes too. So uh, guys, uh, thanks for watching. And now we're going to give some prizes out. We have our uh, International Brotherhood of Magicians, social social media consultant, uh, uh, Gwen Auger in the house. And she has been watching... The uh, feeds. Hey, Quinn. How are you? Hi. How are you? Good. That's good. And do you want to start with the, uh, should we answer the questions? Give the answers to the uh, to the trivia questions? Yeah. Do you want to give the answers? Sure. If, uh, okay. if it, maybe we start with trivia question number one. Oh, number somebody one. says adorable dog. Thank you, Clark. Uh, if you can, if Ryan, if you want to put up that photo of the seven magicians in this screen grab from the TV special, there are seven magicians visible to you from left to right. Can you name all seven magicians? So the correct answer was we started the left. That's Billy McComb and that's Matt King. 
And then that is Johnny Thompson playing the part of Di Vernon. So, so that would be Johnny Thompson and Di Vernon. So that brings us up to four. The painting behind him is Harry Blackstone Jr. That's five, uh, uh, one, two, three, four. That's five. five. The, post, the poster in the background is clearly a Blackstone Sr. poster. So that's six. And then I'm there on the right. That's seven. So those are the uh, seven magicians. And Gwen, who was it that won? The prizes. So we were tied on Facebook answers. So we're going to give out a prize to each of them. So we've got Jason Andrews and Harry Moore. And nice. I'm saying that wrong. So if I'm saying it wrong, my apologies. Uh, send me a message. It's facebook.com slash magic assistant. You can send me a direct message there and we will get those prizes out to you. And then on YouTube, we had the Chicago Magic Bash answer correctly. So if they are watching, then have them find me on Facebook and they can send me a message as well. Nice. So, so we have a, we have two winners from Facebook and a winner from YouTube. Betcha. Contact Gwen. Contact and, me. <laughs> and give your address and she will uh, organize getting you the your prizes. And now the next question was, uh, what was the opening date of Lance Burton, Master Magician? show at the Monte Carlo Hotel in Las Vegas. And the correct answer is June 21st, 1996. That's right. And Stephen Levine was the first to get it right on Facebook. Facebook. Uh, right behind him was Dylan Malone, also on Facebook. And then we had Aiden on YouTube. Nice. Okay. So you guys. Great job, guys. You guys contact the magic assistant Gwen on Facebook. Yep. Facebook.com slash magic assistant. You can send me a direct message and I will collect all your addresses and we'll get those prizes off to you. Nice. And then our last, our la I know some people got this right because I, I saw it showing up in my feed here, right? When I said it, <laughs> where was the last place? When, when, and there was, and I saw one that was close, but not quite. So uh, close. Where yeah. Where was the last place Lance Burton and friends performed before the quarantine? Now I saw one person put in the uh, casino, the uh, fantasy Springs casino in Palm Springs. That was close, but that wasn't the last place that was in Jan. That was in January. The last place was February and that was in Blackpool, uh, England, Blackpool in the UK uh, for the convention there. And who, who won, who got that one? First. Well, we had Jordan Berenson win as well as Philip Hitchcock. Nice. Yeah. And he for sure knew you were there. Nice. Yeah. He was, he was there at the show, I'll bet. Oh, he was there. So if you guys, I if you want to us out, <laughs> make, make, yeah, make sure. Oh, here's a, here's a uh, magic Larry. Great time this evening. Thank you, Lance and crew, for pulling it all together. Oh, thank you, Larry. Very nice oh. of you. Um, so that was the trivia questions. It was. Contact Gwen. And now we were also running a selfie hashtag contest. Unfortunately, Facebook didn't work. The hashtag feature was down. I don't know why it was letting me down, but okay. Facebook didn't work. Uh, so I did pick uh, some winners at random. I put a bunch of names in a, in a hat here at my house and pulled them oh. out. So I've got four from Instagram and four from Twitter. So I'm going to read out your handles. And if you won, uh, reach me at Magic Assistant. And again, I'll take your address and we'll make sure you get those prizes. So uh, again, I might be saying it wrong. So if I am, I totally apologize. These are just your screen names. I've got Jan Lan Gretter underscore official on Instagram. Uh, Joe underscore green underscore four underscore Vista at Instagram. Uh, Colin Elazer, which is Instagram and Ivan Lee Moya on Instagram. And then on Twitter winners, we've got uh, Lance Vegas 28. Lance Sounds Vegas. like you. Was that me? Wait. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Is that yours? <laughs> Is that my evil twin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got Chris Allen Vegas. We've got Wayne the Wizard. And we also have Michael Tricks. You guys all won on Twitter. Michael Tricks won. Yay. Michael Tricks won. <laughs> Michael Tricks. Oh, look. Here's some of the photos. Oh, uh, there's Errol. Yeah, we had some great, great submissions. Oh, I love them all. I just put names in a hat. So. I thought that was the most fair. Okay. Very good. Nice. Look at this. I love these. I love yeah. these photos. Fantastic. Some really great ones. Thank you, everybody, for participating in the show. So 
I think, and if you if you didn't win a prize, by the way, these are available on my website, LanceBurton.com. We just opened up an online store. We've got all kinds of things and more, more things coming. So there's a link on my website. But thank you all for watching. Uh, and let us know, before you leave, let us know in the comments what you thought tonight, if you like this, if you want to see more. So we can do it again. Do you want to see, here's the question, do you want to see... The Young Magician special. Do you want to see Hocus Pocus is Fielding West? Comedy Magic special? Or do you want to see another Lance Burton special? So, what if I want to see all three? Well, maybe we will. But what do you want to see first? That's the question. Thanks, Lance Burton. Miss your show in Vegas. Thank you, Max. Very kind of you. Sean, it was a great way to spend a relaxing evening. Thank you. I love these live feeds. Thank you, Sean. Thanks for watching. Sean is a is a, a, a big supporter of magic and, and uh, magicians, and we love Sean. And uh, this was awesome. Thanks. That's from Julie. Thank you, Julie. The Encounter. There you go, Gabriel. <laughs> I don't think I own that one, unfortunately. <laughs> I think that's owned by Fielding. Here we go. The, the crowd's starting to call for Fielding. They're starting to chant Fielding's name. Yeah, so uh, I think, I think uh, yes, more. Thank you. Very good. Well, all right. I know we're still quarantined for a little while longer, so maybe we'll pull one of these together uh, very soon. Thank you, Gwen. Thanks for your help. One more time, we'll Anytime. contact you where? Uh, Face Facebook.com slash magic assistant. Facebook.com slash magic assistant to, to get your prize. Thank you, Gwen. We'll see you later. Take care. And thank you all for watching, and uh, 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 that was fun. And now uh, I am uh, signing off, and I uh, wish you all a great day and happy magic. And uh, God bless you all, and I hope to see you live real soon. Take care.